the unsurpassed, penetrating, and perfect truth is seldom met with, even in a hundred thousand myriad kalpas. Now we can see and hear it. We can remember and accept it. I vow to make the Buddha's truth one with myself. Homage to the Buddha, homage to the Dharma, homage to the Sangha. Well, the reason I was, I brought this statue, I was sitting in the vestry, which is a, an equipment room left over from the Zooming for the, the retreat we just had this weekend. And this struck me as um, just the embodiment of compassion. And what I'm gonna talk about today is acts of kindness. And somehow the, this, it, this represents all that I'm going to talk about, so if you all want to just meditate on that, I think you'll get the story, the gist of what I'm going to talk about. But here it is for you and for me, too, come to think of it. We'll get it in view so I can look at it, too. Like that. Good. So acts of kindness. The first thing I want to say is, with anything we can do, we can help ourselves out by this phrase, slowing down, sitting still, look around. Okay, I find that's a really good mantra for my life. When I'm going too fast, I can slow down, sit still, and take a look around. Now, acts of kindness um, come about with all kinds of opportunities during our um, perceptions of the world that we can respond to or not. It's up to us. But what um, we can perceive acts of kindness as demeaning or as an expression of trust and gratitude. And that's what I'd like to um, demonstrate that that's a possibility um, with uh, our lives and our practice. Because when we, ha when we do acts of kindness um, for ourselves or we're receiving acts of kindness, it gives us a, a chance to practice certain qualities, Buddhist practice of uh, 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 developing Buddhist uh, qualities that are our practice, like giving and receiving. And the reason we want to do that is because it is a good thing to do, but it also benefits all of us and it in a way of if we're the one that's giving or we're the one that's receiving, it does benefit both of both parties, so to speak. It's not just a, a one-off, like it's a one-dimensional kind of thing. It's an interaction. It's actually a connection of beings, people, or pets, or plants, you know, things that are alive. We can make that um, giving and receiving, or receiving and giving, however it works, an act of kindness, which brings, can give us, help us with trust and gratitude, which is a good thing, because why? Because that makes us, uh, the world, a better place to live in. And you can say, well, that's pretty small compared to the, the world and all of its uh, billions of beings, but too bad. If we can start with a little space, it is a, God has a better place to live in, and we happen to be living in it, <laughs> it's not a bad thing. And part of what, um, the reason I'm talking about this is I find that at the Abbey, um, over the years it seems like acts of kindness are part of our daily, uh, what we do here. It's kind of a remarkable thing. I was just noticing because I thought, well, I'll talk about acts of kindness. But in the course of my day, I feel like I give and receive, receive and give acts of kindness throughout the day. We really have worked on acts of kindness with each other, and it's, it's noticeable, and it's a good way to live. And it's a good place to, to, uh, for you all to come here and to, to you know, join us in this, because we, it's not like it just happens. We've been cultivating this acts of kindness. In, in other words, we've, we, we've taken our practice to uh, heart, to seriously, and out of that comes acts of kindness, i.e., we have compassion for other people. 
somebody's going through a hard time, acts of kindness. I'm going through a hard time, acts of kindness. And we're so close to each other in a certain community type way that we have lots of opportunities to pra practice acts of kindness. You know, I'm going to talk about receiving an act of kindness as, as well as um, offering an act of kindness. So the first part is receiving an act of kindness. Um, and I think we can all come up with examples of what, what's called random acts of kindness, you know, that just kind of come out of the blue and you weren't expecting it and they just have helped in a surprising way. There was a need. It was like the universe, there was a need in the universe and it wasn't up to the people. They didn't kind of prescribe it, you know, I'm going to intentionally, you know, help this person out. It just happens. And I have an example of that from a story. This is a long time ago. But I was in the uh, San Francisco hospital. I had a surgical procedure. And, uh, you know, I'm pretty independent minded, to say the least. And this story will illustrate that. So I was, re it was an overnight, I was overnight in the hospital and then uh, I was in San Francisco and I needed to get to my friend's house family where, they, where I was staying. So I got out of the hospital, got on a bus, believe it or not, took a bus to the Bay Area, I mean across the, the Bay to um, Oakland. And I was on the bus, I had this address but I didn't know where I was when I got off the bus because I didn't know the neighborhood. I had the address, so that was a start. This, I'm like 20s, in my 20s, right? Not all that organized, but. So somebody on the bus said, you look worried, and I was. Because <laughs> I didn't know what to do because I didn't know the neighborhood. And he was from the neighborhood, and he said, I'll drive you to the place. So he did. And this was in the days when, I, you know, it wasn't like a, I just trusted him. And it was kind of like I needed to, <laughs> to trust him. I needed to find somebody that knew where this address was or where the street was. So he drove me to the house, and then the family and my boyfriend was there. And he actually went inside, and it was like a very uh, nice interchange, you know, between the family. And, of course, I was really grateful and a little bit, drugged from the surgery, <laughs> but it worked out. And it wasn't anything I could plan, but it was very, very welcome. And that's part of the, the gratitude that can happen when these acts of random acts of kindness happen. You just feel gratitude because you were, there was a need of some kind, and the universe at that time was able to fulfill it in some way. And it doesn't always happen. But when it does happen, it can be very um, memorable. I mean, this was a long time ago for me that this happened. So I wrote, I looked up on uh, the internet what um, kindness, acts of kindness would be. And it's a little dry, but it makes a really good point that Things that are most likely to make us grateful and heart as uh, after an act of kindness is that is just three things. You benefit from another's actions. Okay, there is a there's a good point to all this, and that you trust the motives uh, behind those actions. So there's a lot that goes on to receiving these acts of kindness. And also, um, the person who did the act of kindness had to go out of their way, and you acknowledge that. It wasn't just a, an easy thing. And what this writer says, then, is all these points were distinctive elements of the Buddha's teachings on action. By allowing the, the kind action uh, for generosity to be a meaning, meaningful action of gratitude, oh, I can't read my handwriting. Meaningful action, meaningful action, and gratitude, a meaningful emotion. In other words, it meant something to you. You had gratitude. 
there was a, something meaningful that was exchanged there. It wasn't just brushing something off, but it had some value to them. And so he lays those things out in that way. And that's a good point. Acts of kindness um, can do something that means something to us. It's not just, uh, I don't know, making a phone call or you know something like that and picking up the phone. It's, it has some more value to it. And that's not a bad thing because it, let's see here, because when we're offering or giving acts of kindness, we don't really know how it's going to work out. You don't know if it's going to be received if you um, or not, or if the timing has to be and all that kind of stuff. It has to be done in a way that you have put some thought into it. And the person that's receiving it needs to, um, well, they don't need to do anything, but they, they, they are receiving it, and you don't know what that's going to bring. It's an element of risk. In other words, you're offering something like um, a thing that maybe they may or may not like, or they may or not may or may not be able to receive in a um, what do you call it um, uh, um, a kind way. They may be in a bad mood, you know, brush you off or be hostile. But when we learn how to find ways that we can be more kind in our acts toward w uh, and thoughts of others, um, the thing that I like is just simply having a day come or begin. And it's not like I say, oh, I'm going to do lots of acts of kindness, because it's not that kind of thing, but it's more in the moment. It's that um, slow down sit still, look around. Instead of being so caught up in our own dialogues and things about what we usually do, slow down, sit still, look around. And in that, it's so surprising to me how acts of kindness can um, uh, present themselves to do. Is this good to do? Yeah, well, this person's having a bad day. Or this person's trying to get through a door and they've got a load in their arms. Open the door for them. Simple stuff. And those kinds of exchanges can be very spontaneous and they have that same um, value of beings come together in an act of kindness, both receiving and giving. That is, um, it's, it's good things to cultivate. So it really helps me to sit, you know, slow down, sit still, and look around, because a lot of times I'm in this, for me, tunnel of vision. You know, it's like, you know, and it guides me until I slow down, sit still, and look around. And then I go, it's almost like, oh, there's something else going on besides my mind's churning with whatever it's, you know, locked on to. And I'll tell you another story that, again, goes way back, but it was um, a spontaneous. So the spontaneous ones are the ones that uh, I was just talking about. And this was like, I figured it was in the 1970s. I was really poor. I was, you know, working this job and that job, trying to make ends meet with the rent and all that kind of stuff. And I had a friend that was just in passing. It was about a week before Thanksgiving. And I don't know, I can't remember the circumstances exactly, but it was a woman or a mother who had a, a daughter and Thanksgiving was coming up. I had no money. And she said, oh, you know, she was really, she was really heartbroken that she couldn't offer her daughter a uh, turkey, you know, a Thanksgiving meal, you know, it meant a lot to her. So, I can't believe I did this, but I did. I had $15 left to my name. I got it out and I gave it to her and I just said, here, there was no, um, I don't know, nothing there except you need this, I've got it, here it is. And so she took it with gratitude and it's, I just remembered that I, it was just like, and afterwards I thought, you must be crazy for doing <laughs> <laughs> but somehow things worked out, you know, it was just, but it was on the spot, there I was, there was a need, I had the 
the $15 and I just said, here, enjoy your... I never heard back from her and I never saw her again, but there you go. It had a meaning. It must have impacted me because I remember it after all those years. Another story I want to tell you is a long kind of intentional story, and I, I hope this comes across all right, but it, it took years ago, you know, at the Abbey here, when people would come for retreats or visits, I think when the guest house first opened, we had, um, we did our best trying to figure out how to be um, hospitable to people. And I would must say that we were uh, pretty new to, to um, I mean, that guest house was opened, but we wanted to learn how to do a good job. And I don't know that we were all that thoughtful because most of us hadn't really given it a lot of time and thought about what that means. So we were just make, doing the best we c could to have a good retreat with people coming here. And then we had somebody from Throssel where we might have had a conclave or something like that. We heard about what Throssel did or does for their retreat guests. And it was like, oh, I had no idea. You must be kidding me. You know, it's just like things that we had not thought about that were so thoughtful and kind. And so we were able to, over time, use those um, suggestions to be more considerate of other people that have come here. And it's really been a, a long, I mean, this was like 20 years ago, and it was just a process that I've seen us learn to develop in a way that we've taken it on as our own way of doing things. And it's surprising to me how often we hear when people say um, that they really have enjoyed their time here, they feel very welcome, and, and they benefit from being here. That's, that's a big thing, you know, and so we've had to learn how to develop these acts of kindness over the time just to keep working on it so that we could make people feel like um, welcome and, ben and to benefit from being here. But it was intentional. So in other words, acts of kindness aren't always spontaneous, but sometimes they need development and cultivation so that you can do a better job, you can develop it, you can, you know, make it work <laughs> better. Um, let me see. I can't read my handwriting. Sorry, I just tear up. I'm not crying, believe it or not. I can't read it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. <laughs> I know that. I didn't mean. I, oh well, there you go. It was crazy, but I did it. So I think out of this can come gratitude. That's kind of a natural thing that can come from kindness offered to people we don't know. And um, it also, it's the kindness that we can offer to people, but also, being able to make a, an act of kindness, to make an offering to others, that benefits both of us, be, both sides, because you have a chance to drop the selfishness in that tight world that we carry with us and to actually come together as just people doing an act of kindness in the daily life. Not a big deal. Opening a door is not anything spectacular, you know, for somebody or... Um, I don't know, just anything that, that, that comes in mind that is good to do. Offering merit, we do a lot of offering merit for people here, including ourselves. And sometimes when we're offering merit or offering acts of kindness, it's easier to do when somebody accepts it with gratitude, of course. You know, oh, thank you so much, I really needed that. And then there's other times when it doesn't <laughs> work out so well, like um, it's not received very well, and people can say, oh, well, thank, uh, you know, indifferent. Okay, well, thanks. You can put it on the table over there, you know, <laughs> something. Or they're in a bad mood. They haven't slept well, you know. 
but there's ways that you can still make that offering and you can learn skillful means and you can say something like well I thought maybe you would like this but if not that's fine too and not to be uh, um, to, um, to to continue to yourself to develop that offering of acts of kindness so you don't really know what you're gonna how that's gonna work out when you you make that offering of c kindness and then, let's see here. and so we do when we make a choice I mean you're in and like I was in that moment when I had fifteen dollars and I didn't really like take the scope of that's all I had in my mind but in that, that, that moment, I made a choice, and that's where we can make choices, where we can say, we can do this or not, you know, is it good to do, and should I do it? And just to sit still with that and see if that is a good idea or not. But what that, ha what that does is it helps us to like broaden our view, to let us drop our selfishness a little bit, our selfish story, you know, our storyline that we're so locked into and um, to look, well, there you are, look around, to not be so tightly bound to our storyline. And I was saying, well, what's wrong with selfishness? You know, nothing's wrong of, in and of itself, but it's the idea that we don't often stop with um, a selfish thought. So we carry on with our storyline so that um, we get uh, so lost in it that we can't really see what's going on. And that's where that slow down, you know, sit still and look around can help us out a lot. But I think we can catch ourselves when we're so locked into our storyline, which is selfish sometimes, you know, just thinking it through. There's more to our lives than that storyline, though. I know that. <clears throat> and what happens is, again, we can have a beneficial connection between uh, people that um, that is beneficial, that is uh, beyond ourselves and beyond the other person. That's the ideal kind of kind uh, acts of kindness that can happen, and it does happen, and it happens frequently. I think if you look in your own lives, you can see that your animals sometimes it's amazing what they can do. They can pull through in all kinds of situations. I don't know, just all. I mean, for me, it can be all kinds of things, so I just, I try to stay open as I can. And by doing acts of kindness is a great, great way to break up our selfish behaviors. And yet there is more to our practice, which is to do our meditation. But then the stillness comes through of what is good to do as best you can. And here's what I want to, the sentence I want to end with. Acts of kindness can become an expression of trust and gratitude. And in my mind, the world could use a lot of that right now. And that's something that we can all do. So I trust that you will uh, take this and do whatever you need to do with it. Thank you very much. <laughs>